Hey everyone, my name is Peter Snow. I'm in the band The Soviet Influence, and this is going to be my rig rundown. Let me start by talking just very briefly about uh, my music. You can check out the links in the comments below uh, for The Soviet Influence. This is kind of an indie rock sort of thing. There'll be some links also to some solo performances that I've done, uh, so you can check out more of my music. I'm going to be playing some of my own riffs and, and and clips throughout this video, so you'll get a flavor of what I'm like, and if you like it, cool, check it out, if not. The other thing I want to say, I'm going to go through pretty much all my gear in this video. I'm uh, going to share with you the knowledge that I have, what I know about my equipment. If there's things that I say that you have insight about, things you know more, or you know something different, or if I say something that you think may not be right, uh, or maybe isn't right, uh, because my understanding is different, go ahead, correct it in the comments, let me know. Um, I'm always uh, excited to learn new things. One of the great parts about being a guitarist and being into gear is that there's always more to learn. There's always new things that I'm discovering about my pedals, about my amps, about my guitars. Um, so please feel free to share that information. I'm always happy to learn something new and hear more about my own gear. So I'm going to start by talking uh, about my guitars. I think that's the best place to start. Um, my main guitar right now, the one that you're going to hear the most today, and I'm going to use the most is this. It's a Les Paul Faded that I bought uh, last year. I played it for about a month in the store, my local music store and just fell in love with it um, and have been playing it ever since. Uh, it's all stock, so it's what, what comes straight out of the uh, Gibson factory. Uh, beautiful looking guitar. You can see that, obviously, I think. Um, and sounds great, plays great. Just love it. You know, It was my first Les Paul, so um, it's been a new experience for me and very eye-opening and very exciting having this guitar. So you're going to hear a lot of that today. I'm going to play it quite a bit. Uh, so the second guitar I want to talk about uh, is this one. So this is a made in Mexico Fender Telecaster that I bought in the mid 90s, uh, or sorry, the late 90s. It's a mid 90s model, 95, 96. Uh, I don't remember exactly uh, which year it was from. Uh, I haven't changed it at all over the years. It's got a lot of play. It's held up really well considering how much I've used it. This used to be my signature sound, uh, this Telecaster, through a variety of different amps over the years and pedals. Uh, I've moved away from it now that I have my Les Paul and I'm trying some new sort of sonic environment, but I still pull this out a fair bit to play it because it, it's just a great sounding guitar. It's held up really well over the years. Um, all look good. The third guitar I want to talk about this will be the last one that I'm going to talk about today, is this one, which is my Ibanez R4 hollow body. As you can see, once again, another beautiful instrument. I bought this probably about 13 years ago or so, mid-2005-2006. You know, uh, first thing ever I bought online and had shipped to me. bought it from a music store in Edmonton, uh, which was then shipped out to me in its case. Um, wonderful sounding guitar. You can get some really interesting sounds out of it. One thing I like to use this guitar for, uh, which you may notice in some of the songs, if you listen to some of my material, is it really feeds back really beautifully, so I get a very musical, beautiful feedback sound out of it. Um, and as you can imagine, it feedback, it'll feedback really easily if you let it. It's just, just a wonderful guitar for that purpose, and also just, just very versatile for me, and I use it for a lot of different things. I've been playing it a lot more in the last couple of years. I've really rediscovered its sound. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to use it today, but it's just a really, really nice guitar, nice sounding guitar. And they still make a lot of hollow bodies and uh, semi hollow and the Ibanez line, and I, I just think really well built, sounds really great, wonderful guitar. Love it. So let's talk about amps. So I have a few amps. I have two amps that I don't really use. I have a PV Rage that I got, my first guitar amp. I was my first guitar, which was a Raptor, PV Raptor, which I traded for my Telecaster. I don't really use it anymore. I still have it. I also have a Champion 110 Fender. I don't really use it anymore. It's, some interesting sounds can be had out of it. I just don't really have a use for it, but I keep it just in case. You know, it's good for, for beating around or taking to, to jams occasionally if I don't want to lug a lot of equipment. But, having said that, let me talk about my Vox. So this is the Vox Pathfinder 15R. Uh, the R has got reverb built into it, as, long as, uh, as well as tremolo, which it normally has. 
this is my sort of bedroom amp. This is the amp I use to play you know, quietly or for small jams or for jams that don't involve drums. I used to play it running through my cap, which I uh, took out the stock Fender speaker, put an eminent uh, speaker into it. And it sounds really great. Get a lot of, really push that 12-inch that speaker pretty good. Uh, the stock speaker, and obviously, is a bit smaller. For my money, one of the best solid state practice amps you can get. They don't make this model anymore. The series has changed, the box has changed. The things I like about it, one, it gives you a really vintage box sound without, uh, without the cost of buying a tube. Um, it's got a tube kind of sound to it, I think. I think it sounds really good. It's also really simple. So when I'm looking at an amp, I really admire what's happening in uh, music technology right now. So you've got like the Katana, the Boss Katana that has 50 built-in stomp boxes basically and you know all this modeling and all these sort of things you know I really admire all of that for me and I think it's an intellectual thing it's the way that my brain works I prefer the simplicity right so I want an amp that's fairly straightforward doesn't have a lot of options you know built-in reverb is great the built-in tremolo in, in this amp I really like but beyond that I don't want a lot you know I don't want a lot of controls I don't want a lot of options it's the same thing when we talk about my pedals I used to be a multi-effects guy you know, deep dive into the menus and all that sort of thing, but I just realized one day that my brain just doesn't really work like that. It's too much work to try and get the sounds I want. It's much easier for me to do that with a bunch of different pedals with simpler controls. Then I can really tailor it by moving from spot to spot. I think it's a visual learning kind of thing. So having said that, I love the simplicity of this amp. My main amp, though, is right here. You're probably wondering, Rang, I've never heard of Rang, I've never heard of a snowstorm, what is this, this combination here? So Rang Custom Amps is uh, Ben Liebrock. He is an electrical engineer, he's a custom amp builder, he does repairs, he soups up amps, all that kind of stuff, uh, at a Port Dover, Ontario. Could not recommend his work enough. So if you live in Ontario particularly, or maybe Western New York, uh, and you want to get a custom tube amp, whether it's a combo or a head, or you want to get your current amp modified in some way, I mean, check him out. I'll put a link to his Facebook page in the comments on this video. He is amazing to work with. He knows a great deal about amps, and he builds you know, beautiful sounding, and I think beautiful looking, uh, amplifiers. So he custom built this for me. It's based on an AC30 circuit, but it's a 15 watt. Um, and the amazing thing was the process. It took us you know, several months to put it together, but I sent him sort of a brief, uh, non-technical description of what I wanted in an amp. And he took that and he made it into a technical uh, schematic and, and really outlined it for me in ways that, honestly, I didn't understand because I am not you know, an electrical engineer. I'm not fluent in that language. Um, but he really walked me through it. And he really created an amp that sounded exactly the way that I wanted it to. And the great thing about it was when I went to to see him to get it, we lived, we played through it for like an hour, hour and a half, just really all the different uh, you know permutations of the settings, and then tweaked it. You know, he opened the box up, changed a couple of things, made exactly the way I wanted, and he'll continue to do that if my tastes or interests change. So amazing, amazing guy to work with. So I can't recommend it enough. If you're looking for a custom amp, contact him. He will do you right, and for a reasonable cost too. Actually, it was very reasonable. Um, even for like a mass produced amp, hey, it was reasonable. So let me let me let you hear this because I've talked a lot now. Let's hear what this sounds like. So there's a couple things to know about this amp. Um, and the first is I think the first, which is let me just play it clean right now. That's really clean. So one interesting thing about this amp, which is a Vox thing, which I didn't know. Um, and Ben was showing me, the way the, the treble and the bass EQ work together is really kind of has an interesting sort of um, relationship in the way that when you turn the treble up, it affects the shape and the contour of the bass uh, response and the frequencies. Um, really kind of amazing uh, to see that and to under try to understand that in the way that affects your tone. Uh, one thing he did do to this amp that uh, I wanted, which is I wanted mids. I wanted to be able to control the mids on this amp. 
his suggestion and what he just, we decided to do ultimately was to instead of having a sweeping sort of mids uh, control, we went with a selectable. Um, so that would be better. He could give me three profiles and we could sort of work from that. So let me play them for you. So the first profile is this. This is like a traditional box uh, mid, which is no mid. So if you know about box amps, you know an AC30 doesn't have a mid EQ control. It has bass and treble. So this is sort of mimicking that. There's no real, nothing happening to the mid. They're just sort of free and free, as I understand. This is supposed to be more like a Marshall thing. And then this is supposed to be more like a Fender. So you can kind of you can hear the difference. I'm just gonna switch it back to the Marshall. So um so that's the the first interesting thing about this amp. The next interesting and I think one of the coolest features of this amp, something I really, really wanted, is the reverb. So the reverb control is there's dwell and level. Um, so here it is, everything at 12. Let's listen to that oscillation, right? Beautiful. The cool thing about the amp is if I drive, I can drive it in the reverb tank to the point of oscillation, self oscillation. <laughs> Distortion. I had a fab tone, like Dan Electro fab tone for a long time. I had a wah pedal for a long time, which I'd never really used. Um, and then I really decided, you know what, I really need to figure out exactly which pedals I want. So I started collecting and started getting sort of my sound. And, and this is kind of where I've landed right now. So, you know, skipping over the tuner, uh, I'm just going to highlight some of the pedals. Let me, let me talk about my chain and then I'm going to highlight a few of the pedals and talk a little bit about how I use them. Um, so the chain goes, uh, the ground control audio surface compressor, the East River drive, the blues driver, the touch distortion, the Pico fuzz, the Boss tremolo, the BYOC chorus, tailspin vibrato, uh, the PH3, the caverns version one, the counterpoint delay from diamond, and right now I have the looper at the end of the circuit. I have a few other pedals kicking around. I have a super chorus a Blood Moon Phaser, and a Garage Tone Axle Grease Delay that I don't use that much, uh, which are all around in my house. So let me talk a little bit about some of the pedals you might not be as familiar with. I think talking about, oh, what does the Blue Driver do in my, in my signal chain is probably not that interesting, but let's talk about the things that might be interesting. So the Serpens is a compressor. I'm not really a compressor guy, I'll be honest. With all of you, I don't do a lot of uh, work with compressors, but uh, I just started getting into them, and I picked up this one uh, from a great company uh, out of Quebec, uh, and I've kind of been playing with it. I've liked that the way that it can sort of you know even out uh, some of my playing because um, sometimes it's not always the most consistent uh, in terms of a volume and, and tone. So I really like that. Uh, I've been using it a lot more. It's kind of always on. Uh, when I'm playing certain songs. Um, 
but I'm still really playing with them, experimenting, and learning about it. So uh, I think it's a good compressor. I'm not an expert on compressors, but I really like it. And the more I get to know it, the more I like it. Uh, the East River Drive, some of you probably have. Um, so it's a TS-808 circuit from VHX. Um, um, that's kind of how I use it. <laughs> the sort of overdrive thing. Uh, I'm going to switch my mids here for a second. Um, I think it's a fantastic little pedal. I love it to death. I use it a lot. Um, I don't have anything specific to say about why it's great. It just is. The blues driver, you guys know everything about, probably. Um, it's a classic, beloved. I think it sounds amazing. This one's unmodded, uh, so it's just the stock. It's from the 90s. Uh, I got it from someone who'd had it for you know, 20 years when I picked it up. The next thing I want to talk about is the touch distortion. So East River Audio, uh, he's a guy out of California. He posts you know, online sometimes. I've had conversations with him. He seems like a really nice guy. Um, it's a rat. Basically, uh, circuit um, with that chip that everyone loves, or people really love, in their chip or transistor, whatever it is that everyone loves. Again, I'm not really a technical guy, but I know it has that. Uh, what I wanted it for, because I like the rat sound. Um, I like the rat sound. <laughs> Thank you. 
Um, the Tailspin Vibrato I love. There's videos galore about it. Uh, it's a great pedal. The PH3, same thing. This is the Caverns version 1. So it has, you know, similar to the current Caverns, it's a delay and reaper. Um, it's simpler than the current, the new model. Um, it does have plate shimmer and modulated uh, reaper. Uh, and then, you know, just delay on the other side. I love this pedal. I first picked it up, um, and then it started to have some noise issues. Like, it was really noticeable noise issues, which I didn't expect from a Keeley pedal. Keeley's known for pretty good quality in my knowledge and experience. So I sent it back to Keeley, uh, and amazingly, I get a phone call from one of the people that works there. And he's like, so here's the situation with your pedal. I tried replacing all of the components, and it didn't make the noise problem go away. So I realized, you know, it must be the bore to me. Uh, the problem being, this is a discontinued pedal. The pedal doesn't, isn't made anymore. Obviously, as you probably know, there's a cavern version 2 now. It's a completely different circuit. So, he said, I looked around the shop and I found the last circuit board that we have for this pedal. And I put it in the pedal, and it's fine. And they sent it back. So, as far as I know, this pedal has the very last installed Caverns version 1 circuit board in it, which I think is kind of a cool thing. I mean, it doesn't really mean anything, but I think it's kind of cool. Um, and, it, you know, it's a nice sounding pedal. I love the reverb on it, so... As you can tell from listening to my, my, uh, my amp, I really like the reverb. Thank mm -hmm. you. 